Natural Weight Loss Revealed Kathy Joyce Weight Loss Dieting Tips dot com www.weightlossdietingtips.com Introduction Millions of people every year make a commitment to try and lose weight, yet many of those same people have a difficult time keeping that commitment and the weight stays on, and the hearts and bodies remain heavy. There are diet plans, diet pills, crash diets, low-carb diets, high-protein diets, pretty much anything that you think of to lose that spare tire around your waist or the bulge in your buns. But, what works? Technically all of them will, but they might require making huge lifestyle changes in the process. No matter what process you use to lose weight, it isn't going to be an easy run. The bottom line is curbing how much you eat, or changing the foods you eat and matching it with appropriate exercise to create a net calorie deficiency. What's that? you ask. Well get into that more later. In this book we have tried to put together as much knowledge as possible on weight loss, so you can make an educated decision on your own weight loss plan. Here is what we have inside, why lose weight? The physical reason for weight gain. Good nutrition. The importance of exercise. What plans are out there? Do they work? Putting together a plan. The problems of the obese, a healthier lifestyle, and more. I've tried to include as much information as I can about weight loss, so you won't leave this book with too many more questions to ask. So, let's get started. We can get on the road to better health and a better body by putting in a little bit of effort for a huge reward. Important, this book is intended to provide information and ideas pertaining to weight loss, it is not a substitute for professional advice from a dietitian, nutritionist or your family practitioner. You should consult your physician before undertaking any sort of diet or extended physical exertion. The publisher and author of this book will not be held responsible for any personal loss, health problem, or hardship that may come a result of reading this book. We have made every effort to ensure the information in this book is accurate and up to date. Why lose weight? Do you look in the mirror and you just don't like what you see? An inflatable tube has taken up residence on your waist, and your butt seems to have dropped a couple of inches. You take a look at your face and you start to see the development of a little bit of waddle underneath the chin. What do you do? Why is this happening? Better yet, what is happening to my body when I gain weight? These are all fantastic questions that are going to be answered this book on how to lose weight, and keep it off. Many people ogle the beautiful bodies on the beach, men and women alike. Nice, tight round bottoms, flat stomachs and well-owned bodies. I'll be honest, there are some who don't need to do a darn thing and they stay in relatively good shape, but for the vast majority of people need to take notice of what they eat, how much they eat and how much daily exercise they are getting. Why does our weight matter so much to us? Probably for two reasons physical appearance and health. Physical appearance. No one really wants to be fat. Plain and simple. For many people physical appearance is linked directly to their self-esteem. If they believe their body is undesirable to others, they can become depressed or stressed and it causes serious emotional problems. Worse yet. In some, it can trigger the impulse to eat even more, making the problem worse. The emotional side of being obese is only just being charted in the medical world. It is already understood that a person's self-worth and self-confidence can be shattered if they gain excess weight. But the emotional toll it can take over an extended period of time might be considerably more damaging. Here is a quick test to see if you have experienced some sort of emotional response to weight gain. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought, I am so ugly? Are you comfortable with the way you look when you look in the mirror? Are you concerned with what your partner thinks of your body? Are you conscious of other people looking at you when you go out or are seen in public? If you answered yes to any of those questions, it is obvious that your weight has some sort of emotional control over you. I don't think anyone wants his or her physical appearance to have that kind of control. So, as I see it, a person has two choices, do something about it, or live with it, and the potential ongoing emotional turmoil. 
I would strongly suggest doing something about it, and we are going to show you how throughout the rest of this book. Health Concerns You have no doubt heard the numerous health-related problems that come from being overweight. Even being 20 pounds. Overweight can start to cause hidden health problems. Instead of that lower back pain being from yesterday's squash game, it's because your body isn't used to carrying an extra 20 pounds. On the front end. Imagine right now if you were to strap a 20 pound weight to your belay and walk around with it all day long. An extremely high weight can put considerable stress on your joints, especially if you are set up, hide, to handle that sort of weight. Then we get to the biggies, heart disease, stroke and high blood pressure. Oh, and don't forget diabetes. These are pretty serious players in the health world. In fact, they are the largest killers of human beings, in the world. Medical fact, in a study of 5,881 people over a 14-year period, doctors revealed that someone who is merely overweight has a 34% greater chance of heart failure. A person who is considered obese has a 104% increase in risk of heart failure over someone who is in their target weight range. Do we have your attention? Overweight and obese. You might think, what is the difference? Medically speaking, there is a difference. Most doctors consider someone who is 20 to 30 percent over their ideal body weight to be obese. You are considered overweight if you are over 25 on the body mass index. That's anywhere from 5 to 15 percent over your ideal body weight. Rather than try to tell you what your ideal body weight is, here is a great website that will tell you what your best weight would be. It also includes a table on my body mass index. HTTP colon slash slash www.halls.md slash idea weight slash body dot htm. Either way, you are at a much greater risk of having one of the above diseases by being overweight. If that isn't a reason why you should start trying to lose weight, I don't know what is. So, if you found that you are overweight or obese by doing the above calculations, and you are serious about losing those unwanted pounds, then you have a decision to make. Is it time to take action and make changes to your lifestyle that are going to make you healthier and happier? We hope so. Why we gain weight? There are many reasons why a person gains weight. It can be as simple as overeating and not getting enough exercise to counteract the number of calories that are being consumed, to it being a gene that is passed down generation to generation. To properly understand how a person is going to lose weight, you do have to understand why we gain it. In this section we are going to describe the different reasons why we gain weight. Consumption of calories. This is when we just eat more calories than our bodies use each day. When we eat food our body converts the material into sugars. It is actually an evolutionary response our bodies have to store excess energy sources when food was scarce. When food weren't readily available, humans were able to use their body fat as a means of sustaining their regular daily activities between other meals. It was easier for a person to get by when the food sources were low, if they had a little extra storage. Even though our early ancestors began the storage of fat in their bodies, they had to work very hard to find or harvest food, so the excess fat was usually burned off. They didn't have the same problems with obesity that we do today. Today, for the most part, food is readily available for each of us to consume. And, far too often we indulge ourselves in the edible luxuries that we have today. So now today, we are forced to find alternative methods of trying to lose weight that has built up as storage for lasting between meals. Understanding how the body retains fat and how it is burned is our only weapon against gaining weight. As our bodies have not yet had the time to catch up to our rapid development in society, and our ability to produce food whenever we want it. Reasons for weight gain Low metabolism Metabolism can be linked to genetics, but it has more to do with how active we are, and the amount of muscle tissue we have compared with fat. Our muscles actively burn off the calories that we consume. They require more energy to work effectively. If we are living an inactive lifestyle, our muscles break down and they don't burn the calories like they should. Therefore, 
If our muscles are not breaking down the calories we consumed, it gets converted to fat cells. When we are not active, our metabolism decreases, and as a result less calories are burned for energy and more are stored as fat. A more active person slows the decline of their muscles mass and may even increase the overall muscle mass, depending on activity, and then the metabolism is higher. This makes it easier for a person to lose weight. How do you increase your metabolism? Exercise that helps build muscle, also helps increase metabolism. Any exercise will help. Eat smaller meals more frequently. If you have a small, healthy snack in between meals you can actually jumpstart your metabolism. There are certain foods that speed metabolism. Don't starve yourself when trying to lose weight. If your body has nothing to metabolize, it will slow down completely. Then when you go to eat, your body will have a very difficult time breaking down food without it turning straight into fat. One of the best low-impact exercises to do is walking. Try walking for 30 minutes three times a week. It will increase your metabolism considerably. Make sure you eat breakfast. If you don't start your day getting your metabolism going, you could have a hard time doing it when you eat a big lunch or big dinner. How you eat, your eating habits can play a huge role in determining your weight. Do you eat smaller, lean servings instead of gorging yourself on your mother's world-famous spaghetti and meatballs? What about how fast you eat? All of these things have an effect on your ability to gain and lose weight. Here are a few tips on your eating habits that can have a profound effect on your battle to lose weight. High fat, high calorie foods are tough on the body, and it takes a long time to break them down. You are at greater risk if you are eating foods like this. Pastas with cheeses and or cream sauces are an example of high fat and high calorie. Take your time when you eat, for a number of reasons. First, your stomach takes time to tell your brain you are full. You risk overeating when you eat too fast. Second, if you chew your food completely, the enzymes in your saliva aid in the breaking down of complex compounds in your foods, making it easier for your body to keep up. It's also worth mentioning that the faster you eat, the greater chance you have of building up gas. Eat smaller portions more often. We discussed this earlier and you can boost your metabolism by making it work in smaller session more often. Also it helps when you eat smaller portions, because you don't risk overeating and forcing your body to keep up with your eating. Your genetic makeup, your metabolism may already be determined for you by the genes your parents passed down. But, this is not an excuse for not doing what you can to raise your metabolism if you have been passed down a slower one by nature. Just as people with higher metabolism can lower it by reducing activity and having poor eating habits, many people who are overweight or obese will say, it's hereditary. This can be the case, but your genes are just a small part of the overall picture. They only determine whether or not there is a likelihood of a person having a predisposition for obesity. Exercise, everyone needs to get exercise. There is no replacement for getting the heart pumping and building up those muscles when it comes to losing weight. But, not enough of us make the time to get it. Exercise don't have to be pumping iron at the gym or even taking a 10 mile bike ride. Take your dog for a 30 minute walk around the park. He will love it, and you will feel better, too. You've all heard the benefits of exercise before, but they are worth mentioning again. You will feel better. Isn't that a good start? Exercise rejuvenates the mind, body and spirit. Exercise rebuilds muscles and therefore increases your metabolism. Remember muscles are burners of energy and the more muscles the more calories are burned. Find out how you can burn abdominal fat very effectively. Exercise lowers stress. Studies have shown that even 20 minutes of exercise, 3 times a week can have a dramatic effect on your stress level. Exercise burns calories. When we get further into the book, and learn the process for losing weight over the long haul, you will understand why burning calories is so important. If you burn more calories than you eat, then your body starts burning the fat. If you don't exercise on a regular basis, you will gain weight. That is almost as sure as death and taxes. 
especially if you continue eating at a rate where you would be packing on the pounds if you did do some exercise. Always remember that exercise can be any physical activity. Walking, cycling, swimming, sex, anything where you are raising your heart rate for an extended period of time. For some people, that could even be working in the garden. Is society partly to blame? You could say that the advent of supersized fast food meals, and even fast food in general could be a problem for many people. Our lifestyles don't permit the time it takes to put together a good solid meal for ourselves, or to even get enough exercise. But, is society really to blame? I don't think so. Everyone has the choice to lead a healthy lifestyle. And when asked, Probably every person would say they would prefer to life a healthy lifestyle and live longer, rather than continue on the trend they are on now. As humans, we have been given the opportunity to make choices. Those choices come in many different shapes and sizes. The choice to lead a healthy lifestyle is one of those many forks in the road. Good nutrition. Good nutrition coupled with exercise is the key to being able to lose weight. Good nutrition is the key ingredient to improving your chances for weight loss. But we're not talking crash diets here, or plain old starving yourself. We are talking about eating healthy and making sure your portions match the number of calories you need on a daily basis. It is believed that if you can create a 500 calorie deficiency every day between exercise and nutrition, you could lose up to a pound a week. Your calorie intake. Those calories should not be subtracted off of your recommended daily amount. It should be taken from the amount of calories you eat on a daily basis right now. For example, if you were an adult male eating 3,500 calories per day you can drop 250 calories from your diet and increase your energy consumption from exercise by 250 calories. If you can do this every day you will create a 3,500 calorie deficiency over the entire week, and that is the equivalent of one fat pound. In order to lose weight you need to find a 500 calorie deficiency every day. Do it through exercise and reducing what you eat. Minimum calorie intakes. Women should not consume less than 1,200 calories per day, or 1,000 less than your maintenance value, how many calories you need to keep your weight steady. The Harris-Benedict formula is one of the leading ways to calculate your maintenance value. Men should not consume less than 1,800 calories per day, or 1,000 less than your maintenance value. If you try a crash diet, where you are only consuming 1,000 calories per day and working out, or getting exercise, sure, you will lose weight. But, it isn't going to stay off. When you don't give your body enough fuel. It starts to consume the muscles in your body. As we learned earlier, the muscles are an important part of being able to metabolize your foods. Eating too little is not the way to have sustained weight loss. You risk burning muscle of you crash diet by not eating anything. Your body will consume your muscle tissue, actually making it more difficult to keep the weight off down the road. Eating much less slows your metabolism. You aren't eating enough food to keep your metabolism running on high octane. Tracking your calories. It might take a little bit of effort, but each food has a written caloric value on the packaging. If you take the time to notice what is on the package you will be able to monitor what your calorie intake is. When you can do this, you will be able to keep tabs on what you are eating and whether or not you are meeting your target intake levels. If you want to be serious about losing weight, then you need to take the matter into your own hands. Don't just slap a healthy portion of lasagna on your plate and start chowing down. Calculate how many calories are in a reasonable serving and go from there. Remember there is probably a high fat Caesar salad, dinner rolls, and probably another vegetable sitting on the table. You are going to have to monitor each of those in order to come up with a good caloric value from this meal. Most meals will have you in between 500 and 1000 calories. This is a good target area. If you can calculate where you actually fit in there with each particular meal, you will be able to get a better idea of your plan for losing weight. The food we eat. Aside from the actual caloric intake of a person, 
the type of food we are eating plays a large role in how we can lose weight. First of all, 100 grams of broccoli has far less fat than calories than 100 grams of jujubes. There are foods that are high in fat, high in calories, process, natural and more. Each one of these is going to have an effect on your ability to lose weight. It don't mean that you can't eat a lot of these things, and you have to give up your favorite foods. You just need to be aware of how much of it you are eating. High Fat Foods You have probably already heard the word that high fat food is not good. It builds up the bad cholesterol in your blood vessels, possibly causing heart disease and other problems in the future. There are different kinds of fat. But the ones that you want to steer clear of are, saturated fat, and trans fats. Saturated fats are those kinds of fats that are solid at room temperature. Here are some saturated fats that are high in saturated fat. Coconut oil, palm oil, hydrogenated oils, partially hydrogenated oils. Generally speaking you can identify any of these foods as being high in fat. It's not very good fat either. This kind of fat puts the pounds on the body, and makes the heart have to work harder. Fat Fact Fat contains twice the number of calories as an equal portion of carbohydrates or protein. Your diet should never contain any more than 30% of a caloric intake from fat sources. Here are some common high fat foods. Donuts, french fries, fried bacon, butter, pastries, mayonnaise, olives, American and cheddar cheese nuts. We have included both what you would consider junk foods and other foods one would believe to be healthy. Your healthy foods have a lot of nutritional value besides the fat that you are consuming. And because you should be getting 30% of your calories from fat sources, choosing the healthy sources of fat are going to make a big difference in your ability to lose weight. High Carb Foods We have all heard about low carb diets and how effective they are. There is a lot of merit to them. But you have to understand how carbohydrates work. Carbohydrates are broken down into sugars, providing the body with a steady source of energy. The carbs are divided into two areas. Simple and complex. Simple carbohydrates are those that are broken down by the body immediately, and used for energy. These are high energy foods or snacks that a person eats to give them a quick burst of energy. The concern with simple carbs is that if you are active while you are eating them, or aren't planning on being active, your body don't use the stored sugar. When your body don't use the stored sugar, it converts it into fat, which is used as a source of energy at a later date. This would be fun if your body didn't use the current carbs and calories first, before it starts burning the energy stored in the fat. Complex carbohydrates are broken down and converted into sugars for energy, similar to simple carbs, but they are broken down over a longer period of time. This provides for a steady source of energy and because it is only being broken down over time, it don't have the tendency to build up as fat the way a simple carb would do. Both types of carbs are important and they have their place in our diets. But, you have to watch your consumption of carbohydrates because if you lead a relatively inactive lifestyle, you are going to gain weight because you won't be able to use the energy created by the breaking down of the carbohydrates. A person who watches their overall carbohydrate intake can actually eat meal that prepares for whatever activity they are going to be undertaking. If a person is planning on spending the evening watching television or doing something very relaxing, it is probably best not to have a big simple carb dinner, and only minimal complex carbs. You can plan for when you want to eat carbs, just like anything else. The information is on the packaging that your food comes in. So what are some of the simple carbs and complex carbs that we eat every day? Here is a list of what you might be eating. Simple carbohydrates. Biscuits, honey, soft drinks, chocolate, licorice, jam, cake, apples, pears, raspberries, grapefruit, cherries. We have included a list of junk foods and of health simple carbs. The fruits that are on the list are simple carbs, but they are also very low in simple sugars. They will not add to your weight problems, and they all offer tremendous benefits as far as your health. Complex Carbohydrates Brown rice, potatoes, brown bread, bagel, corn, yams, beans, peas, lentils, pasta, whole of grain cereals. 
Complex carbs take a lot longer for your body to break down, and therefore provide your body with sustained, slow-release energy. What does this mean to the person who is trying to lose weight? This is important because if you are looking to trim some fat from your waist, you likely don't want to be boosting your carbohydrate content without increasing your level of activity. If you load up on carbohydrates, your body will convert it into the sugars that provide energy to your muscles and other parts of your body. If you are inactive, those sugars are converted into fat cells to be burned later. Unfortunately, your body burns the freshest energy first. That means unless you are creating that calorie deficiency you aren't going to be able to drop the weight that you want. Where do we go from here? Your nutrition should be first and foremost in your battle against weight. Starting with a good plan for nutrition is going to make your waistline a lot trimmer. Choosing the right foods is key to good health and finding a balance between eating and exercising. We should stress that you can still eat all of your favorite foods, well, maybe not all of them, and have a good meal. You don't have to starve yourself in order to lose weight. You just need to be responsible in what you eat. Here are a few ideas when you are putting together your diet. Eat from all four food groups. This is going to make you a healthier person all around. Having too much food from one particular food group is going to make your diet bland and might rob your body of some important vitamins and minerals. Manage your calories. You can't just start throwing together a meal and eating however much to make yourself full. If you do this, remember that you have to exercise enough to create that calorie deficiency to lose weight. Steer clear of high fat foods. High fat foods are going to make you gain weight. There is nothing wrong with snacking on a piece of pie at Thanksgiving or another time of year but don't make it a part of your regular diet. Watch your carbohydrate intake. Be sure to balance it with regular exercise. Everybody needs carbohydrates to function effectively, but in excess, it can build up fat cells with the sugars that are not burned off. Drink water. Your body thrives on having fluids to flush out toxins and excess waste. Later on in this book, we will help you put together a good diet plan along with a good, light exercise program that is going to help you to start shedding pounds and feeling better about yourself. Part of losing weight is learning how you can lose weight, and what you have to do to make it happen. By just going through and going on a diet and not understanding what it takes to make that diet successful isn't going to help you sustain your weight loss over a longer period of time. In the next chapter, Exercise is going to be at the forefront. A steady dose of activity is going to help you on your way to weight loss. It is a given. Many diets will help you with the nutrition end of things, but they are often lacking in the importance of regular exercise. If you are truly looking at a long-term solution to your weight, then the next chapter is going to be extremely important for you. Getting Active Don't worry. We aren't going to ask you to go out and spend hours in the gym, working off your weight one mile at a time on the treadmill. Instead, we are going to give you common sense and easy ways to create that calorie deficiency you are looking for to lose weight. Exercise is important in this process because it is the one sure way to burn the calories and energy your body creates before it turns it into sugar, and consequently fat. Exercise in your life Contrary to the belief of some, channel surfing and running to the washroom during commercial breaks is not what I would consider exercising. Exercise is the raising of the heart rate for an extended period of time, realizing the benefits of increased muscle gain, and energy being burned off. Many people don't consider a leisurely stroll around the park, or walking up the stairs in their building, as significant exercise. In reality, it is exercise and for some it is the only exercise they get. But, rest assured, it is far better for you than the 500 times you press your thumb down on the channel button of your remote control. So when you sit down and think about what you do for exercise, what do you come up with? Do you walk your dog for a long distance? Do you wrestle with your kids? It can be anything where you are exerting yourself physically, mowing the lawn, reeking leaves or shoveling snow. The case for exercise. 
Why does exercise have to be such a big part losing weight? Because it is the only way to burn off the calories that we eat. But, that's not the only thing that exercise does for us. Exercise keeps us healthy by exercising our heart. Our heart is also a muscle, and the more it gets worked, the more in shape it is. Studies show that regular exercise helps to reduce stress levels. More exercise can help you feel better about yourself and your life. Exercise does a lot of things that we don't even realize, like improving memory, increased reaction time, increases bone strength, makes us more flexible and improves our quality of life. If you want to live longer, exercise is the easiest route. In general, a person who exercises on a regular basis will lead a longer life. Increased immune system response. If you have had trouble sleeping, exercise is one way to help you get a better night of sleep. Increases our strength and endurance. As you can see the benefits of exercise are staggering, and I didn't even put down all of them. The bottom line is, exercise is one of the best ways to stay healthy. There has never been such a push for exercise to be a part of your life as it is today. More and more it is being realized that the exercise you do can be as simple as working in the yard or garden. Anything where you are more physically active than lying on a bed or the couch is being rated as exercise in today's world. That's because it all helps in the end. Exercise in your home. You can exercise in your own home, without having to go to the gym, and it don't take much. Remember, the idea is to start burning more energy than you have in the past. So what kinds of things can you do? You probably won't believe it, but they have attached a calorie burning chart for household chores. There are calories burned by childcare, cooking and other things you do. Here is a look at what you can burn with an hour of activity each. Based on a 190 pound person. Fixing your car, 259 calories. General home carpentry, 302. Heavy house cleaning. Vacuuming, scrubbing, 388. Regular house cleaning, dishes, sweeping, 302. Light house cleaning, washing clothes, 216. Cooking, 216. Gardening, 431. Moving furniture, 518. Reeking the lawn, 345. So as you can see, many of the things we do every day can burn calories. Your house could be a lot neater and your yard in good shape and you can start to lose weight. With the amount of calories you are burning by everyday activities, you could keep yourself active. But, chances are, it isn't going to get you to that target area of having a 500 calorie deficiency. This means that you are going to have to take on another activity or series of activities that are going to get you to that level in order to lose weight. Obviously more physical activities are going to get you to that target level faster. For some of you, taking on an intense physical activity is going to be a major roadblock. I'm going to provide you with a list of common things you can do, that are not too strenuous, but they will start to burn off those calories more quickly. Light exercise. This is probably going to be the one area that you will be able to incorporate into your daily routine to get your heart going and the calorie burned off. A leisurely bike ride will burn 345 calories in an hour. Stretching for an hour, 345. Walking your dog, 302. Mowing the lawn, 474. Jumping rope, slope, 690. Shoveling snow, 518. Treadmill walking or jogging, 518. Playing with children, running around, etc. 345. Light exercise is something we could probably all include in our lives. The benefits are going to be tremendous. Once you start shedding some weight or if you are a little adventurous and you want to include some other exercises or activities in your life, here are some good ones that require very little more than effort on your part. Moderate exercise. This will include everything from aerobics to biking, and some of which can be done in the comfort of your own home. The calorie numbers are based on one hour of the activity. Aerobics, low impact, 431, 
High impact, 604. Biking, 12 to 14 miles per hour, 690. Stationary bike, moderate effort, 604. Golf, carrying clubs, 474. Hiking, moderate terrain, 518. Jogging, 604. Jumping rope, moderate, 863. Running, 11 minute mile, 776. Roller skating, 604. Swimming, 518. Rowing machine, light effort, 819. Basketball, 388. Push ups and sit ups, 690. You can burn a lot of calories by picking up a casual hobby or two in the daily swing of things. One of the best casual activities is probably walking your dog at a brisk pace. You can burn 345 calories if you take Fido for a longer than normal walk around the park. Now, if you are feeling like you want to take this weight loss seriously, and you are willing to lay it all on the line to find an activity that is going to get your heart really working, your blood pumping, and the pounds being trimmed from the waistline. Before we get into the heavy exercises, you should consult your physician before getting into these activities. They could pose health risks for some people if they are started without building up your exercise tolerance. Heavy Exercise Many of these activities are just an extension of some of the exercise we have talked about earlier in this chapter. The only difference is the amount of physical exertion you are putting into them. We have also included a few activities you can take on and the amount of calories they are going to burn. You might be able to get your 500 calories deficiency by competing in them only 3 or 4 hours per week. Biking, 16 to 19 miles per hour steady pace for 1 hour. You can burn over 1000 calories for every hour you hit the streets on your bike, keeping up a good pace. Canoeing, over 6 miles per hour, 1035 calories. Running, 6 minute mile. 1,380 calories. Ice hockey, 690 calories. Jai Lai, 1,035 calories. Jumping rope, fast, 1,035 calories. Cross country skiing, between 600 and 1,400 calories depending on effort. Squash, 1,035 calories. Swimming, from treading water to the butterfly stroke. 500 to 950 calories will be spent. All of the calorie numbers are estimates based on consistent effort for one full hour, by a person who is 190 pounds. Finding an exercise program that is right for you. This could be the tough part. We all live busy lives and most of us find it difficult to squeeze an hour out of the day to sit and relax, let alone spend it getting exercise. The unfortunate fact is, you are not going to be able to lose weight and keep it off forever, if you don't make some sort of commitment toward making exercise a regular part of your life. Just keep in mind it don't have to be anything that has you huffing and puffing, although that is going to get you to your target quicker. Everyday things that you do, including household chores and playing with the kids take energy. If you do them with a little more zeal, and try to expend even more energy, this could be the first step to creating the 500 calorie per day deficiency you need to start losing weight. If finding time to exercise is getting to be a challenge, I have a few ideas to help get you going. Most of these are choices you can make during any day to increase your activity. Ignore the elevator and take the stairs, even if you are on the 14th floor. You will end up feeling so good about it after you have conquered it. You might just keep adding floors after a while and then coming back down to your own. This might be tough at first, but you will be see so many benefits from it in the long run. Get up an hour earlier in the morning, dawn stay up later, and go for a walk. Take the dog. This does a couple of things. First, you will probably eat earlier, getting the metabolism jump started. And you will probably burn off a few hundred calories during your walk so you will start the day already at a deficit. When you play with the kids, toss the ball around or go for a bike ride. If you get active, they get active and everybody benefits in the end. 
Scrub a little harder and sweep a little quicker. Maybe try and quicken the pace when you mow the lawn. These things are all going to help as you try to lose weight. Join a sport. Whether it is the local men's basketball, or go with the ladies to aerobics, find something you can do for a couple of hours a week that is going to help you on your way to losing weight. One can probably spare one night a week to do it and it is well worth the effort. Invest in home exercise equipment. But use it, too. You can combine your favorite activities like watching television or reading a book with the exercise of a stationary bike or treadmill. If you normally curl up with a good book for two hours, why not do it while you are taking a nice leisurely walk in the basement of your home? Keep this in mind, any exercise is good. Do it when you can, but try to do it at least three times a week. That's where you will benefit the most. You will probably have to do it more regular if you want to create your 500 calorie per day deficiency, but you can work up to that. You have to realize the benefits of regular exercise are far greater than just losing inches off of the waistline. I would recommend anyone who lives a sedentary lifestyle to get out and enjoy some sort of physical activity at least twice a week. It will benefit you in the long run. What diets are out there? There are probably a million lose 10 pounds in 10 days methods but they aren't really worth the paper they are written on. At least in my opinion, and the opinion of many doctors. However, there are different methods of weight loss, some with varying degrees of success. Everything from Johnny Craig and Weight Watchers to the Atkins Diet, South Beach Diet, and more, somebody, somewhere has an idea for you to lose weight. In this chapter, we'll tell you what they are, and then later in the book, we'll tell you our method for losing weight, and keeping it off. The plans. I would suggest there are half a dozen solid diet plans out there, each with their own pros and cons. Some require joining a club, and others want you to purge your pantry of all of the bad things and move into a different world of food. We won't get into specific details about each plan, but rather offer an overview and some of the advantages and disadvantages we have researched while putting together this book. It will offer information and hopefully be able to provide you with a better framework for your health. The Atkins Diet This diet is the latest low-carb craze has caught the diet world by storm. Reducing your carbohydrate intake is a means of losing weight. It also provides for the consumption of high-protein foods like seafood, eggs, and meats, along with monounsaturates like cheeses, oils, butter, margarine and sausages. The beginning of the Atkins diet is called the induction phase. A person on the Atkins diet cannot consume more than 20 grams of carbs per day, for two full weeks. The carbs are generally consumed from eating slight amount of vegetables, but no high-carb veggies like potatoes, corn, or carrots. Dieters can add 5 grams of carbs to their meal plan weekly, until they reach a target maximum of between 40 to 90 grams of carbs per week, total. This part is called the maintenance phase. Now we've already discussed the benefit of not consuming large amounts of carbohydrates, but we also mentioned the importance of carbohydrates in creating sugars for us to use as energy. Bros. You could lose weight with this method. There are probably millions of people who will vouch for that. You are controlling your carbohydrate intake, and to a certain degree that can be good agrees that a dieter should limit the number of high sugar and processed foods. Cons Limiting the consumption of fruits and vegetables goes against the rest of the scientific community. Both fruits and vegetables have been linked to a significant reduction in up to 50% of cancers. There are studies that link high fat and high red meat diets to an increase in cancer. Although proteins help build muscle, there are little to no carbohydrates to burn for energy. While this will help lead to weight loss, there is a potential for the body to burn some of its muscle along the way. This will in turn reduce your metabolic rate. The 40 to 90 grams of carbs per week is a fraction of what is suggested by health organizations for a healthy diet. Overall, there are very few side effects to undertaking the Atkins diet. And it does work, but not as good as some might have you think. In a study done, 
40% of people dropped out of the Atkins diet plan inside one year, because it is too hard to adhere to. On the good side, the participants that stayed lost an average of 16 pounds in the first six months. But, by the end of the year it was reduced to 10 pounds. Many dietitians say the number one reason why diet fads roll in and out is because people don't like being restricted from eating foods that they enjoy. That's why people cannot stay on a diet like the Atkins diet. Studies have also shown that many people who go on fad diets often end up gaining the weight back, because they have been restricted from certain foods for so long, they enjoy eating them again at some point down the road. Now, the reason we are here is because we want to provide you with a long-term solution to lose weight and keep the weight off. Typical low-carb diet To the body whether you consume a spoonful of sugar, or take a bite out of an apple, it don't matter. It all gets converted into sugar. As we have talked about earlier, our body burns sugar for energy. What the low-carb diet, not as substantial as Atkins, suggested is that we limit the number of carbohydrates so our body don't have a steady supply of them, and it begins to burn fat. This plan does subscribe to the same school of thought that the Atkins diet does, but it don't go to the same lengths as the Atkins when it comes to limiting carbohydrate intake. The idea of this diet is to create a sugar deficiency, so your body starts to burn your fat as a fuel, rather than the sugars. According to health experts, your body always burns the sugars before it starts burning fat. So it stands to reason that in order to get your body burning fat, you should limit your carbs. One would think that this is the exact same thinking as the Atkins diet, so why wouldn't we have the same things to say about it? The reason for that is the number and type of carbohydrates that are being consumed. The typical low-carb diet will take you to the lower end of the recommended daily intake of carbs, or maybe slightly below it. It will also suggest cutting out many of the quick simple sugars that are found in foods. If you remember, the simple carbohydrates are broken down quickly adding the sugars immediately to your blood supply. Complex carbs are broken down over a longer period of time, giving the body energy. Now, just because you are doing exercise after consuming complex carbs, it don't mean that your body breaks down the carbs quicker. At some point it will begin to break down the fats. That's one advantage of making complex carbs a part of your diet. It's when you consume large amount of simple carbs and then do no physical activity. The sugars convert directly to fat, because the body isn't burning them. Bros. You will probably consume less simple carbs. This works two ways, first, it limits the amount of sugars that you have to burn immediately, and second, Many of the simple carbs not fruits and some vegetables, have a higher fat content. This is not good for a diet. If you include adequate exercise to burn the little sugar that you are consuming, then you will start to burn your fat. This is good. It isn't to the same degree as Atkins, so you will still be able to consume some carbs that you like, but not many. Cons. You will lose weight. But, it comes down to the same problem as the Atkins diet. You might not want to sacrifice your favorite foods in the long run, and that might be a problem keeping the weight you lose off for long term. If you go too far on the low carb side, you might be limiting yourself from the various healthy fruits and vegetables and beans, legumes and whole grains. Just repeat the cons in the Atkins diet. Reducing carbs in your diet is a good idea. But just as long as you aren't limiting the important fruits and vegetables in your diet to the point where you are severely limiting nutrients. You also have to like eating certain foods, low carb foods, like meats, cheeses, poultry and other high protein foods. That's the staple of the low carb diet. Low fat diet. This is probably the most common diet that people undertake, mainly because you can still eat a lot of your favorite foods. You just have to eat in considerable moderation, or only once in a while. The reason why these diets are so popular is because they appeal to the masses that say that high fat equals high calories. It does, fat is by far the most calorie dense food we eat. Therefore it makes sense that the less fat we eat, the less calories we consume, 
and it makes it easier to lose weight. But, health experts will tell you that eliminating all fats from your diet might not be as good an idea as you think. You need to separate your different fats into the good ones and the bad ones. Yes, there are good fats. Bad fats. These are your saturated fats and trans fats. We touched on them earlier in the book, but we didn't really get into why they are bad. Basically, there is a connection between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. It raises cholesterol more than anything else in your diet. When you have a diet high in cholesterol, it usually ends up clinging to arterial walls, constricting the flow of blood to the heart and the rest of the body. This makes your heart work harder to do the same amount of work it had to do before years of eating high cholesterol foods. Trans fats are considered the worst kinds of fats that a person can consume. If an oil or fat is partially hydrogenated, you can bet that it is filled with trans fats. These fats have been proven to lower good cholesterol and significantly increase bad cholesterol. Trans fat are used to give foods a longer shelf life. Good fats. These are monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. They have many important components that help in proper cell structure, hormone production and it is used to store energy. They contain omega-3 fatty acids, which have been linked to reduced heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and high blood pressure. Anytime you can consume something that reduces those devastating diseases, you're on the right track. In this diet the object is to reduce the bad fats from your menu. You can carefully select what you are going to eat just by reading the package. Pros. This is probably going to be the easiest way to lose weight. By limiting fats, you are limiting calories, as we have already talked about creating a 500 calorie deficit being the way to lose steady weight. You still get to eat many of your favorite foods. You don't have to worry about the healthy food that you eat. It might be high in carbs, but it is low in fat and that's the key to this diet. You will not limit your dietary needs, simply to achieve a diet plan. Carbs, fat, proteins and nutrients are all important to this diet. Cons If you try to cut out all fats, you could be losing some very important fats that help in developing healthy cells and storing energy. On this kind of diet, you could have a tendency to cheat. It is far too easy to have a piece of cake, or eat a chocolate bar, when you don't have a restrictive diet. If you don't equate the fat with calories, then you might not follow through. You could run into the same commitment as any other diet. You might have to cut out some of your favorite foods in order to make this diet work. In the long run you have to be committed to losing weight. Otherwise you might go back to the dark side and start eating the foods that got you the weight you are in the first place. Weight Watchers Jenny Craig These are two popular diet plans that do follow many of the principles in the above dietary methods. But, I think the primary reason for these diets plans is to count calories and fat. They have some of their own foods and supplements to boot that are high in protein and low in fats and sugars. One of the biggest appeals of these diet plans is the ability to have the support from others. Losing weight is not an easy task, and the difficulties are shared with others through these programs. You go to meetings and meet with someone to help you along in this process. Many people find a huge benefit in that. People all over love to have others rooting them on in their battle against obesity or overweight. These organizations provide people with the support system to help them lose weight, along with a weight plan that has been proven to help people to lose weight. Their dietary plans seem to state that the dieter can eat most of their favorite foods, as long as they are watching their calorie consumption and their fat intake. Diet Pills Diet pills have their supporters and they have their detractors, and both sides have evidence to support their claim. The side against diet pills probably has more evidence to support not using them, but when the bottom line is losing weight, it might swing the balance in the supporters' favor. Studies have looked at the long-term risks of taking diet pills and whether they have adverse side effects. Right now, those studies indicate that there might be some obese-related disease that occur by using diet pills, lowers blood pressure decreases insulin resistance lowers cholesterol. 
but the long-term studies are as of yet, inconclusive. The intended purpose of diet pills is to help people who are on a diet, to stay on the prescribed diet by suppressing intense hunger and limiting one's need to snack or eat other food. But, as with any drug, there are many risks and negatives associated with their use. Becoming dependent on pills is one of the greatest concerns of prescribing diet pills. Most aren't necessarily habit-forming, but there is an addiction to their effect on your appetite. It becomes important to have the drug because it is helping your battle with your weight. Potential long-term side effects that haven't been determined yet. Until the studies have been done you could be exposing yourself to risks. People should not expect these to be a quick, overnight success. That is not what these pills are for. They are meant to help supplement a concurrent diet that someone is on. You can develop a tolerance to the drugs over time. They do reduce their effectiveness after about 4 to 6 months. The evidence to support this is that a person's weight loss levels off after this time. You should not use any unregulated, or over-the-counter diet pills. They are not subject to the same stringent testing and regulations as the prescription diet drugs. You have to beware of any sort of diet pill that says that is burns fat. You can't burn fat without a steady regimen of exercise and a lower calorie diet. Important. You should always consult your physician if you are thinking of buying diet pills. You should talk to your doctor about your weight loss program to see if you are on the right track. All of the above methods have their pros and cons, and believe it or not, they will all help you lose weight. You will likely find benefit in applying any of these diets. The toughest part is going to be in sticking with it for the long term. That's why the term diet is something that I don't necessarily agree with. In the next chapter, I prefer to call it a lifestyle change. You need to make a commitment to nutrition and exercise in order to make your fight against your belt line a successful one. All of the fad diets and support groups are not going to be able to keep weight off like a commitment to changing your life. Our plan for losing weight. I am not going to give you a list of food and we aren't going to give you exercises to do to help you lose weight. What we are going to talk to you about in this chapter is a change in the way you look at food and exercise and its importance in your life. We have talked from the beginning that we need to create a calorie deficiency of about 500 calories per day. That is going to require a commitment to eat 250 calories less and burning 250 calories more per day. That is going to take off one pound per week. Not a bad start, in two months you will have lost nearly 10 pounds. You can even lose more than that if you want. Create a 1, 000 calorie deficit per day for the week and you will lose 2 pounds per week. Even this is reasonable if you are able to drop your calorie and take 500 and increase the amount of exercise you are doing to burn 500 calories per day. How you do that is completely up to you. But, we do have some pointers that you should follow in order to make sure that you aren't starving yourself and you are getting the nutrition you need. First things first, lower the fat content in the food that you are eating. Lowering fat lowers calorie intake. Eat in smaller portions and eat slower. This is going to help you overall for two reasons. If you eat smaller portions and you eat them slower it is still going to fill you up. Your brain don't register what is going on in the stomach for a couple of minutes so people that eat fast have a tendency to overeat. If you combine smaller portions with slow or reading it translates into one thing, less calories. Try and exercise three times a week. Minimum. If you can get in some sort of physical activity five times a week, you will be well on your way to solving this problem with your weight. Eat a well-balanced diet. Make sure you have something from each of the four food groups. You also need to have some carbohydrates, good fats, and proteins. Stay away from junk food and empty calories. This sounds like a clique, but it is the absolute truth. Many of these foods have bad fats and they are simple carbs that turn into fat if you don't burn them off. Fats also have the most calories. You might have to sacrifice a nice dinner if you have a chocolate bar now. Exercise. If you want to keep yourself on the straight and narrow when it comes to losing weight, you have no choice but to become more active. 
Exercise is the key to success. Exercise is the only way you are going to create the essential calorie deficiency you need to lose weight. Remember, the exercise can be anything, from doing regular housework to joining the local canoeing club. You have to be able to find an activity that is going to help you burn more calories, and add that with the calories you are saving in your diet. Here are a few tips that we can offer for exercise. Do what you can, and then 10% more. You don't need to start running marathons to lose weight. Start with something that burns your target 250 calories per day. Always consult your doctor if you want to get into a sport that is considered strenuous. It may be something that you can work toward rather than jump into right away. Find something you enjoy doing rather than something that has to burn a lot of calories. You stand a far greater chance of sticking with it long term if it is something that you like. You don't want to quit your exercise routine because you might not get it started back up. Find something you can do with friends or family. Get the kids involved or your spouse. If you have support and you're having fun then there is a greater chance that you will continue doing it. When you have the choice, do something active over sitting in front of the television. It's okay to sit in front of the boot tube every once in a while, just don't make that a habit over being active. Try and switch it around. You wouldn't believe how many extra calories you will burn if you rake the lawn or sweep out the garage. Exercise as a part of a lifestyle change that is going to make you feel better in the long run. Make it something you are committed to for life rather than something you can only be committed to because you want to lose weight. There are so many other benefits to exercise besides trimming the inches of your waist. Nutrition We've been through all of the different reasons why you shouldn't eat this food or that food, when what it really boils down to is the number of calories you eat. And you have the ultimate control over that. You can get a head start on losing weight if you can learn to control your calories. It is that simple. Find your target body mass index or your target weight, and then you can figure what the number of calories is to maintain that weight. This is where you find your 500 calorie deficit. You are allowed to eat whatever you want, just as long as you are staying at or below the target calorie consumption. Keep in mind that you want to also get all of your vitamins and minerals in there to stay healthy, so don't just snack on your favorite sweets. Don't skip meals to finish the day under your calorie intake level. If you do this you are going to have an adverse effect on your metabolism. If you are going to be over by 100 calories, go ahead, and just work extra hard when you do your exercise. Don't consume saturated or trans fats. These are the worst kinds of fats that you can eat. They actually turn into the sludge you see at the bottom of your bacon pan after a Sunday morning breakfast. And they do this in your arteries. Your diet is the second most important part of losing weight. Coupled with your exercise, it will determine your success at trimming the numbers from your bathroom scale. Eating a healthy, well-balanced diet is going to get you further ahead in your fight against weight much more so than diet pills or some other fed diet. The body needs all of the vitamins and minerals that are available to it, and by limiting what you can eat, you are limiting your nutrients. Words of wisdom, if you are about to undertake a weight loss program don't consider it as a diet. You have to be willing to make a lifestyle change, diet, exercise and making healthy decisions. Are you ready for a lifestyle change? Setting up a plan for you. I've drilled you with information on setting up a plan that works for you. One thing you have to remember, this isn't a diet per se, it is a change in lifestyle and priorities. Controlling your weight has become a priority, and you are going to do what you can to make it happen. You are ready to tackle the monumental challenge of losing weight for the long term. You are ready for all of the trials and tribulations of weight loss and ready to take the roller coaster ride and the heartbreak of the week without any weight lost at all. You want this because it is a better lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. We touched on this earlier, but here is a step-by-step -step list of things you can do to make weight loss an experience that you are going to enjoy. Set a goal. If it is to lose 10 pounds, 30 pounds or 100 pounds, 
it is very important to know where you want to get in the end to make the trip more enjoyable. Make sure your target is realistic. If you want to lose 100 pounds do expect that if you aren't going to be willing to make some sacrifices and start getting exercise and eating right. Be willing to make sacrifices to reach your goal. If you like the Thursday night line up on NBC, you might have to take some time out of that in order to get to where you want to go. If you can play recreational basketball on Thursday nights that might be the best bet if losing weight is important to you. Find your current body mass index rating and then your ideal weight. Figure out where you have to get to be in the proper range. Find out how many calories you need to consume to maintain that weight. When you know how many calories you need to maintain, then you can figure out how many calories you can consume in order to help yourself meet the 500 calorie deficit daily. Put together a rough outline of calories you are likely to consume in a day regularly. Write down a typical day for yourself. Be honest. If you are at 3000 calories, then that's what you're at. If you cheat yourself here, you aren't doing yourself any favors if you want to lose weight. You will probably have to put some leg work into this by doing a little bit of research into how much you eat and what you are eating. Once you have your calories figured out, calculate how much physical activity you are doing daily. Again, some research will be required to make sure you have accurately figured out the amount of energy you have expended. Now once you have both your current calorie intake and your current energy expanded calculated and ready to go, this is where you start making your first adjustments. For diet, you need to see where you can cut calories from your diet. That's as easy as it sounds. You can do it by shrinking portions, not eating the ice cream dessert after dinner, or the bag of chips at lunch. Then take a look at where you can increase your activity. Can you take an evening walk with your spouse? Go for a bike ride? Move the living room furniture? Whatever it takes to build up your exercise level. Go with this plan and stick to it every day. Be vigilant. It will be tough for the first while, but then it will become second nature. If you don't cheat, you will start to see the result ringing up on the scale within the first week. You might even see results that are better than expected. After a month or so, redo everything, or at least reevaluate it. You may be able to increase your exercise level or take on a new activity that requires more effort. Then the weight will just melt off your body. The number one rule we are going to leave you with is, stick with it. You can't give up or you won't ever achieve your goal of losing weight. You are taking a step in your life that is going to change the way you are forever. Embrace it and we'll see you after you have lost your weight. Conclusion Congratulations! You are well on your way to losing weight and keeping it off for the long term. I have armed you with as much information, and tried to reinforce that information so you have the tools you need to get ahead in the war on your weight. By taking these steps to a healthier lifestyle you are reducing your risk of heart disease, diabetes, stroke and high blood pressure. The closer you can get to your ideal weight the better chance you have of living a longer life and sharing it with family and friends. You are going to be able to see things and do things that you never thought you were going to be capable of because you thought you were restricted by your weight. Now that is not a problem because you have taken control of your life and made that decision you needed to reverse the cycle of weight gain and turn it into weight loss. There is an entire world out there for you to see, and I would hate to see you miss it because you told lose weight and keep it off. Now you have the information and the motivation to burn that waistline down and have a happy and healthy life. To your health and happiness. Kathy. Useful websites. The internet has been a tremendous revolution for the flow of information. You can research almost anything in the world on the internet. Losing weight and keeping it off are no different. There are vast resources and information on dieting and losing weight, and in many cases it is probably best to be as informed as possible about what you are getting into before you take the time to do it. But, if you are looking for information the internet is the place to get it. Much of it won't match or agree, but you can be the judge of that, and when in doubt, you can talk to your own health practitioner. I have put together a few of websites I found to be particularly useful, 
so you can benefit from the information on them as well. These are in no particular order, and I have included comment for each of them. HTTP colon slash slash www.freedieting.com slash tools slash calorie underscore calculator dot htm. This site has the caloric needs calculator that you will need to help you find what you need to maintain your current weight, in order for you to figure out how many calories you can surrender to the 500 calorie per day deficit. The root site www.freedieting.com is a good site with a lot of valuable tips and advice. http colon slash slash www.nutristrategy.com slash activitylist 4htm This site provides general counts for many exercises and activities that we engage in daily. This will help you figure out how much energy you are expending during an average day and then how much you need to add to that to burn off the fat. HTTP colon slash slash www.theclub.org slash dieting tips dot asp. This simple site has some good information and tips that a person can put to use right away. Information about other diets and it has a weight loss forum where some people might find support or ideas to help them along. HTTP colon slash slash www.ameraanhart.org slash presenter dot jhtml Identifier equals 1480 What better place to get tips on losing weight than the American Heart Association? Your heart is significantly affected by how overweight or obese you are. There are some great tips that think outside of the box on this site. There are other tips on the site that will benefit the person trying to lose weight. HTTP colon slash slash www.freeweightlossresources.com slash This site has a lot of free resources on the web in the areas of fitness and dieting. Good site, but I get the feeling they are trying to sell me something in the end. HTTP colon slash slash www.fsum.d.gov slash tilde dms slash whwghthtml. I got to this site somehow searching for information on how to lose weight. It is a government site that has a lot of information on many aspects of weight loss and the effects of obesity. An informative site. HTTP colon slash slash www.halls.md slash idea weight slash body dot htm. This site provided me with some insight to my own weight and where my target weight is, and it will likely provide you with the same information. There is also a link to a body mass index calculator and other links on weight loss. Tips on how you can transform your body in as little as 49 days. Discover how little known body science that when combined with certain foods can skyrocket your metabolism.